Queo un tiburón. From Cafeteria Film Studios in Miami, Florida, Fresh or Fresh presents Que Bola, where we talk to various movers and hustlers in South Florida who are popping off and succeeding, and in the process, how they're influencing the 305 culture. My name is Darwin Figueroa, and I am your host. I hope you enjoy this, and let's get into it, all right? Listo. Hey, what's up, everybody? I want to thank you again for listening to the Get Well Out podcast. In this episode, I sat down with the cast and crew of the Flex competition alongside their first two champions from season one and season two. This was a really awesome talk. We got into how they came about creating this competition, how they're spotlighting all different types of forms of variety and talent here in South Florida. And it was very insightful for anybody who's trying to get on. This episode is chock full of awesome tidbits. So let's get into it, right? Listo. Go. All right, so this is another episode of Que Hola. I have an entire cast and crew here <laughs> from the Flex um, representing live in the studio. I want to first and foremost thank you guys for coming out here and talking to me and letting us know what's popping off in South Florida, the creative vibes that you guys are putting out there. Let's start off over here with, with uh, our, our first introduced candidate here, Teddy, who first originally came to the show and spoke to us. Reintroduce yourself, Teddy. Yo, what's good, world? Uh, it's Teddy B. And it's nice to see y'all again and uh, to hear from y'all too. So it was good. And uh, you, my sir, can you please introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, everybody out there in podcast land? It's your boy, Zorenzo, singer-songwriter from Miami, Florida. Zorenzo, I like that name. What's your What's your stage name? Zorenzo. Oh, Zorenzo is your stage name. Oh, okay, I thought that was your name. You know, when you sing, when you sing, you got to keep the original name, like Luther Vandross, Whitney Houston. You got to use your name. Oh, okay. I want to put the last name. All right, I like that. I like that. That's that's a good concept. But it's like Kanye West. Yeah. What's your What's your name, bro? Introduce yourself. My name is Khalil Bohannon. I'm the Flex Creator and Event Coordinator. Khalil Bohannon. I like that, bro. I like the I like your name. That's an original one too. Everybody here got some dope ass names. My ma'am, uh, can you please introduce yourself? I am Raquel Ramirez. I work with the Flex as well. I help do talent coordinating, some event management, um, a little bit of hosting here and there, and pretty much just help Khalil out with whatever he needs. <laughs> All right. Pierre, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, world. My name is Pierre Smith. Um, I'm basically the general manager for the Flex, but I also, you know, dip my feet in many different things. So that's what's good. That's what's good, man. So now that everybody introduced themselves, I want to get into like how the Flex came about, you know, because that's like how all of you guys basically came to know each other, right? Through that particular, yes. is is it a competition? What is the Flex actually? Is it a place to like go out and like uh, showcase your talents? What is it? What? It is a music competition. Okay. Fact. Yeah. It didn't originally start that way. It started as an open mic for like the first few shows. Uh, All right around the FIU area. Initially, because I, I used to play at an open mic up in North Miami every Tuesday. It's called the Imperial. It, it, was, it was dope. But uh, it kind of ended. And I'm from down south, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Raquel. There's, there's, there's a really big culture down there. So is, so is Teddy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so and, am I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we all from yeah, down yeah, south. Yeah, 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 we were repping. Yeah, thought I, it was the flex, really from the south. I grew up in 216. Oh, damn. Yeah. I know where that's by. Color Manor, oh, yeah. yeah, Chocolate I'm kinda, City. Yeah, kind of around there right, right now. I'm, I'm not that far south, but <laughs> yeah, I'm still repping. I'm still repping. <laughs> no, but that's what's up, man. So it started off as an open mic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And then yeah. it grew into a competition. Yeah. Exactly. When yeah. is it that you guys, like, decided to, like, push it into the competition sphere? Um, that was, like, in, like, the earliest stages, like, after mm -hmm. the third show. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. of... Like two, three events. Yeah, yeah. We just saw... We just pretty much saw the demand. We saw how many artists there were in Miami. And, you know, there are artists who, here in Miami... We were talking about this before we started filming, but, you know, there's kind of a set type of vibe to Miami and we're mm -hmm. like no there's so much more to Miami and we saw that once all the artists kept approaching us you know asking oh can I get a spot you know like how are we going to benefit from this what's what's up like what's it what's the other angle in this mm -hmm. so then, the ante. yeah so like, then, what, what haven't we yeah. seen done already yeah competition so Khalil he came up to me we used to work together mm -hmm. and uh he came up to me with this concept oh you know uh, I have this competition that I'm doing. I'm like, what competition? You're you're switching up the whole game with that because I never heard of a competition. Mm -hmm. You know, here in Miami, where where you give an artist the opportunity to, yes, record a you know a video, record record in a live studio, amazing sound, amazing quality, um, you know, just 
a distribution deal. It's just giving them an upper hand in an industry that should be hearing what it should be hearing. That's what's so, up, man. Yeah. So then all you guys came together after like a couple of shows because you said, man, this open mic shit ain't mm-hmm. really working or <laughs> <laughs> what was it? <laughs> was it, it was it too many, too many people trying to get on the stage? That's what, um, uh, and then you said we got to thin out the herd or? Kind of, you know, kind of, yeah, a little okay, bit. Honestly, a little bit. <laughs> there was one open mic where it was, it was a lot of we were unfavorable at performances. Other, like, we, were like, we, we got to kind of like weed this out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And I, I want to keep the customers coming back and I, I want to yeah. keep a, a vibe that's different from what people are used yeah. to. And so, you know, up the ante a little bit of competition was just the easiest way to get who we want up on stage. Keep it keep it interesting. You know? I like that. I like that. Um, I often go to the open mic and um, Churchill's on Monday nights. They have an open mic. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a yeah, crazy ass open mic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it does show you a, like that side of like... <laughs> I went there <laughs> once. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Yo, yo, I was looking at it online today and I was like, I was looking at open mics to go to, and I was like, "Yo, these kind of pictures look kind of dark, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't it's know. a funky place, Churchill. You, you never know, know what you're gonna find. It's a cool it's vibe, a though. though. It's a really cool yeah. vibe. You know what I'm saying? I love like, it, though. Going there, I love it. It's, it's a yeah, vibe. it's in Miami. I like going home. there to hang out and chill and yeah. to perform. Yeah, I went dope. We I was gonna leave when I went. No, for sure. I mean, I love. I love to see this. Teddy on camera, like, yo. Teddy said, like, yo. I said Churchill's was cool for the record, but they tried to sue us. We don't think anything bad of Churchill at all. Oh, yeah, we, we all go there. It's, it's, a, it's a dope spot. So where is it that you guys host the competition out of? Uh, it's a place called the Open Stage Club in Coral Gables. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where's that located? Uh, it's like on um, Miracle Mile. You know, like they sell those fancy high-priced restaurants. Okay. Um, It's called like Galliano Street. I don't know if you know it. Yeah, okay. Galliano Street. Yeah. Uh, the, the heart of Coral Gables, basically. Nice, nice. How'd you guys get a, a, in it? Is that where it originally started? Uh, No. no well, when no. it was still in the open mic stages, <laughs> we, were you there? <laughs> yeah. We had the open mic. We were, so we went from a couple different places before the open mic. I mean, open stage club. It was uh, Panther, Panther Panther Coffee, Panther Boulevard Cafe. Pa- yeah, Panther Boulevard Cafe. That's right next to FIU. Like over, okay. like there was a uh, a lot of apartment homes over there. So yeah. right over there, next to Fourth Street Commons, was a little coffee shop. But it had like a nice little big backyard where we hosted it at. And then right across yeah. the street from FIU was the Hookah Lounge. The that's hookah where lounge. that's where that we did it at next. Yeah. And then it just moved over to Open Stage Club. We did it two times there and the next thing you know was that Open Stage Club which was a big improvement. So That's good, man. You guys got blessed with that with that uh, yeah. with that yeah. location. Yeah, so that, definitely. That's pretty We're prime location well. right there. So so Zaytoven, oh, excuse me, Zaytoven. So Zorenzo and uh and Teddy. Oh, <laughs> Zayto, I kind of like that. Together, so I kind of like that. That one. Working together soon. You gonna see that? You just spoke that into existence. There you go. You, you never know. Of, hey, y'all heard it here first. Y'all heard that, right? D, D called it out this first. This is alter ego. Alter ego. So Zorenzo and Teddy, you guys have presented yourselves on the on the on the flex as talent. Right. Of course, yeah, so yeah. tell me. So th- these guys right here, they put together the show. They're they're behind the scenes. They're BTS and they're doing all that other good stuff. I want to know what the experience is for an artist. What is it like for for somebody who's fresh and green who's just gonna get there? What is it that that you're first initially trying to do? Is it, you're trying to improve the the um, provide something for the for the crowd? Provide something for the judges? Is there something different there? Are you thinking about that? It, does everybody have their own lane? How does that work? When y'all go first? Um, well, yeah, first I just, I heard about it, uh, from, you know, like Pierre reached out to me, you know, cause Pierre, Khalil and I, we all went to college together. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, we were all Greek and stuff. So we, we knew each other from that whole circle. So Pierre hit me up to go and like open up for the show for season two. So it was like the first show of season two, I went, uh, to open up and I just did some poetry and I did some music just to, you know, kind of like. You know, entertain the car, the crowd. But I even Zorenzo even made a joke like at the end of the competition, they're like, "Oh yeah, Teddy," but I wasn't a performer. I was yeah. just like, you know. And um, that time Zorenzo performed, and I saw like he was the first winner for it. So like I really started seeing a lot of like the stuff Zorenzo would do. You know, like how he would dominate the stage and stuff. So I was like, okay, I already see what like what they're looking for. Like he set that bar. So when season two came around, I, I did that performance and then I reached out and I was like, hey, how can I like actually compete? I want to compete because mm-hmm. I came to the next show to support one of my friends. I was doing poetry and then the talent there, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I want to be on this stage too. I so I just reached out to them and I competed. And then from there, 
you know, um, Zorenzo was a judge, and he said it, you know, what they look for, stage presence, you know, your your rhythm, your confidence, your vocals, your mixing, like, they listen to all that stuff. And so, Zorenzo, you being a forerunner, and you being, like, blazing the trail for the, for the competition, what was the experience for you, like, originally oh, getting there? Do you guys know, do you guys know each other, too? Well, I, I knew Khalil. Okay. Going into it. Okay. Dude, swerve, I think, or... I was at an event one night and he told me about it. He was like, yeah, I'm doing this competition thing called a flex. You know, would you be down to do it? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hell yeah, just tell me. <laughs> I'm, I'm there, okay, you know, whatever, you know. Uh, and I judge a lot of things off of the person. Okay. Like, I feel like Khalil's a person that he embodies like quality shit. Okay. You know, like if he was to do an event or something like, it would be dope. I would, yeah. I would have a platform where I could really showcase myself in a good light with good lighting, mm -hmm. good sound, good band. You know, mm -hmm. I yeah, just, I, you know, I put that, I played that over him basically. You yeah. know, so I was like, hell yeah, I'm down to do it. Me going into the flex, like seeing the venue that I was at, I was completely right. I'm like, dang, it's a dope ass venue. Drinks are good. The stage is nice. The people that are coming out are dressed nice. The crowd is good. All right, let me go, let me go crazy right So quick, they made it know? official. So you feel that they put together such a good package that you couldn't bring B quality or C quality. You had to come like you had to come with. Oh, it. most definitely. Yeah. But that's even like before the flex. Okay. Like me as an artist, period. I just mm -hmm. always want to bring my my best foot forward. You know okay. what I'm saying? So it's just the platform that's laid out. Walking into the open stage club. I was like, man, it's a nice stage, nice L shape. Okay, they got the big couch yeah, with the judges yeah. set up. Super it's like original. Yeah, that, it's a that, nice setup. That it's damn stage. spot is perfectly set up for a competition. Like mm. the chairs, the, everything is just, it's like it was yeah, meant yeah, to be. Yeah, like the VIP mm -hmm. It felt like it was meant to be. And then they offer you the option to have your, your songs played by a live band. Oh, okay. As well. Like people yeah, don't that do that. Is so you don't, dope. You're not afforded so that dope. opportunity. Yeah, like, to play with a live band. Everywhere else. Performing. Like, you know, in Miami, most people, they want to charge the artists to come out. To be the entertainment, yeah. use your face on the flyers, have your supporters come out, pay at the door, buy drinks, you don't get a dollar from it, yeah. none of that. You know, that's just the typical way that Miami people do stuff, yeah. you know, in, like the, the promoters and club people. Yeah. But the flex is different. Went into it, man. I was just super excited. I was like, man, I can't wait. I just can't. I, I was just eager that's to good, get on the man. stage. And I didn't see anybody else. What do you mean? That was the trick. Like, it was a competition, but... Did I had tunnel vision. Oh, okay. Yeah. All I saw was this thing being over. Like, let me get a, let me get a little drink. Let me get on stage. Let me get stupid. Yeah. Let me get off stage. Is and there, by is the time there, I finish uh, blacking out, let's see what happens. Is there like <laughs> behind the scenes? Do people really get competitive? Is it something that people are really gonna like try? Oh to... man. <laughs> you know, you know it is. You can feel it. Nobody yeah. says everybody. You know when people want to be competitive when they get super nice. Okay. And they start doing extra shit that they don't normally do. Pulling mm -hmm. out your chairs for you and shit. Hey, yeah, come on, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you for a decade. Yeah. You never pull my damn child. You you trying to be yeah. nice. You trying to, I don't know what it is, but you could feel the tension. Okay. But everybody was in good spirits. Nobody was nasty. Mm -hmm. Everybody was just overly friendly. Mm -hmm. But you know what it was. Okay. You, you knew what yeah. it was. Yeah. I lucked up, though, because I was at the finals. I was like, damn, I hope I don't go first. I don't want to go first. You okay. know, like, because it's always that little nerves. Yeah. That's when my nerves start kicking. I'm like, that's the finale. I might trip and fall or some shit. I don't know what, you know, <laughs> Khalil had us all pick a number out of a hat. Like, okay. to not have favorites who go first, second, or whatever. All right, that's and a good And my system. number was one. Oh, shit. <laughs> Do, you know, <laughs> Do you know these people allowed me? Yeah. Like, everybody was like, somebody actually wanted to go first. Okay. He was like, man, hey, let me take your number. And I'm like, are you yeah. Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. What number do you have? And he had the last spot. And oh, like, snap. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Thank you. So Mine they set you up. Almost the same, that's, too. That's dope, man. Thank you. You had the same experience? We, almost the same experience. We went up, and, like, uh, I think I drew one, and another guy drew, like, I drew one, another guy drew three. It was D. Blair. Shout out to D. Blair. <laughs> and then um, Shawnetta. She also was up. She also had drew like the middle number, so um, they wanted to switch, and I had the number one. So I told D Blair, I'm like, yeah, bro, you can take you number, had the one. number one too. Yeah, <laughs> I drew number one too. You told and me. And then yeah, so me. I gave D Blair number one, and he went first, and I went second. I was like, cool, because I was kind of like coming at it like Zorenzo too. Like I've done talent shows and stuff like that before, so I was like ready, and I really was eager for people mm -hmm. to see me. Like, mm -hmm. people, like nobody knew me. Like a lot of people, were like yo, I didn't know you even do that. So yeah. like. I was really hungry to do that. 
So when I came out, I was like, I don't care what number I get. Mm, like, yeah. if you need number one for yourself, yo, whatever makes Same. you feel good, I want you to do it because I want you to go out there and be comfortable and you go hard because mm. you got people here coming yeah. to see you right. too. That's you feel true. me? So you go one, I go two, I don't care, I go six, yeah. whatever. Right. So. And in the finals... We drew the same thing, one through one, two, three, and we did the same swap. Damn, that's crazy. And but it was dope because it's like it is a different kind of like it's really like a game. Mm-hmm. You get me? So it's like you know you gotta do you play strategic? Do you go all yeah. out? So it's like that's what I was telling Pierre and Khalil, and like I was telling Raquel, like you guys have a really dope thing because it's like layers upon layers on it. So it's like to the outside world it looks real cool because it's a competition but once you're in it mm-hmm. and you kind of know the thing you're like yo this is crazy like mm. it's, it's a, lit bro so, yeah, so can one of you guys explain to me the system of how the competition works how does yeah. uh, how do you like wh- how does the rankings work so all of that the whole entire so this flex is comprised of a season alright okay a season is made up of four shows okay we had two seasons so far, obviously, two champions. What up? <laughs> so the first three shows of that season, those are all preliminary rounds. And okay. Each show will have like somewhere from eight to ten artists. All right. And all of those eight to ten artists are going to compete in each preliminary round. We're going to pick three to four winners. Out to of go each? On. Yeah, out, out, of each each, round. out of each show to okay. move on as finalists. Okay. So from each round, we'll take it either three to four people. So by the time you get to the championship, you got nine to ten, anywhere from seven to ten artists okay. coming back again. So the people that are in the championship, this is their second time showing yeah. up. They're hungry. They're yeah. like, where's my food? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. already here. So that's <laughs> yeah. why the championship is crazy. Because yeah. like you're already coming back. Like, I'm here to win. I'm not, I didn't perform here twice yeah. just to just to do yeah. it. You know, so that's yeah. why it's always the craziest thing. Damn, that's dope. So there's three rounds. And and how do you guys go about judging then? I hire people for that. Okay, so you hire a judge and bosses. <laughs> I should have looked at the camera. <laughs> That's oh, dope. yeah, all of, all of the judges are, are people that they know music. They've been there before. They're in the business. Yeah. You Absolutely. know, they know the sound. They you, we, have, we have either the logistics side of the music, like, oh, we have a lawyer in music, you mm-hmm. know, so... She sees what what could work, what could not work in the market. Um, we have the actual producers. Mm-hmm. We had uh, Zorenzo um, judging the the season two. That was when when Teddy won. He mm-hmm. was judging season two. We're like, you know, what would be good if one of the winners was a judge. So that's what we did for season two. Because they know what it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, that's crazy, man. And and when you guys go ahead and um and decide, all right, these are the people that are going to be moving from stage one to stage two. Do you try to present them with different um like obstacles or is it the same format? Like just bring me what you got again um, in the same well, way. Well, there's a score sheet and it's based on original uh, originality, poison presentation, crowd reaction and clarity of voice, I believe. All right. Yeah. So can an artist, like, for I'm getting that is like, could one artist have one really good song and just play it over and over and over and get to the finals, or nah. does he have to come like he has to has no, switch it up? No, you have to have original music. Continuously, you ha- uh, continuously yeah. original music. You okay. can't play the same songs. Oh, okay. You know, uh, it it's just really based on what you bring to the table, how the crowd feels you out. It's it's all you when you're on the stage. It's like. You you have the platform, you have the stage, you have the setting to do what you want to do. So, you know, either put up or shut up, you know? I feel you. And it's yeah. two songs per competition. Like, each artist gets mm-hmm. two songs, so... Oh, okay, see, like, so when they present the themselves on the first time, they get two songs, to, mm-hmm. they come onto the stage twice? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. It's it's like a 10-minute set, and in that 10-minute set, you'll do two songs. Oh. For, for either, whether it's a, a preliminary round or the championship. Oh, okay. Championship's a little bit different. Yeah. But, yeah. How do you switch it up on the championship? So the championship has two rounds in one night. You know oh, what I'm okay. saying? So we'll bring all the finalists back, all seven, eight, however many people. Mm-hmm. They all perform one song. And then mm-hmm. after the first round, after they each do one song, the judges, you know, deliberate. And they pick three people to move on to the final of the oh, finalists. Oh, so there's a final, final yeah. round. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you that there's levels. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that shit dope, yo. After the, the final of the finalists, we have a last round of the night, and then you decide. A lot of tension, bro. A lot of yeah. tension. But it's dope. Everybody in the crowd is like, ah. 
Oh, yeah, man. I gotta say, like for the final three for both season one and season two, I gotta give a shout out to those finalists because they were crazy. I'm yeah. talking about for the first one, we had Zorenzo. I mean, that's enough said. Zorenzo killed it on stage. Had everybody, every guy's girl leaving them for him <laughs> to the front of the crowd. I'm like, my girl left me. I was like, damn, dog, where you going? Like, I tried to bring it back. She punched me in my face. Damn, it's all good. It's all good. You win some, you lose some, but. Um, and then you know we have my boy Pat, man, the lyricist, man, man's crazy on the mic. Alpha Zulu and Malcolm Wilson. Yeah, and then and then Malcolm, who's just a crazy musician, songwriter, singer, like amazing, amazing, Guitarist. amazing guitarist. Just, he's just nasty. So them, and then season two, season two is just you know up there. You know, he, he having, loves the season two lineup. Like, I he, love all the lineups. I love all the lineup. But I mean, I'm just like. Oh, no, that season two lineup was That season two lineup was amazing. Season like was Teddy, amazing. Teddy who raps, sings, does poetry and goes back and forth from English to Spanish and all his music. Uh Shanetta who has that bad bitch kind of attitude while the amazing singer and then you know just having D Blair who's just that yo. dope rapper with the bars and, and high. Like D Blair is just a beast, yo. man. Shout out to yeah. D Blair, man. Yeah, that nigga's nice. Real, yeah. So he on tour right now. Yeah, and everybody, all of our, a lot of our artists yeah. are either on tour, has music published, and you know, just in general, are just you know, head runners. So that's why I really fucked with yeah. all of our finalists. And you know nah, what the cool dope. thing is too, the mm-hmm. uh, that they, I don't know, if we're gonna get to or not. No, go ahead. They um, they also have prizes for the competition. Yeah. It's like legitimate prizes. Mm-hmm. You get me? It's not just like. You know, like a hundred bucks or something like that, which that's still dope. But yeah. like they set you up with like studio sessions. Yeah. Like with me, they set me up with a music video and a distribution deal that's with dope, Online man. Digital. So like right now, you know, from all the the little moves that I started making with them, mm-hmm. like I'm going to Texas mm-hmm. tomorrow for nice. Labor Day weekend. I'm Sweet. coming back. I'm doing True. a distribution deal. And my music is gonna be up on all platforms. Like you know, thanks to the Flex with Lorenzo, you got what was like studio session uh, or what else? A uh, uh, single, a single deal. One. Uh, Free studio session and um, full distribution. It was supposed to just be one song distribu- distribution, but they're mm-hmm. going to distribute the whole project. Yeah. So, nice, so man. Yeah, yeah, same here. So, so, yeah. so the prizes are something that people really want to battle for because it's like yeah, exposure. Yeah, 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 yeah. For it's me, good. bro, like, you it's know, I'm a... just a prize. It's like a jump start of your career if you haven't jump started yet. Correct. Or either it's just like an extra push. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even to piggyback off of what you were saying, too. I look at, it, I look at the flex as a, like... A nomination category, you know, like we watch the awards all the time, True. and they box rap, they yeah. box class, they box R and B, they box this, they box that. But in the flex, every all of the nominees are different genres yeah. competing, so you have to push your way through. You gotta, you exactly. gotta, your genre exactly. has to speak. Like you have to. It's like you know, it's like a big ass nomination. Exactly, and just to like piggyback off his piggyback, like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, but. Yeah, like he was saying, it's, you know, I feel like the reason why that kind of came about, and I always talk to Rax and Khalil about this, is that me, Rax and Khalil, we all love music just in general. We just love j- music. But I think, like, our background, our um, foothold of, like, how music came to be for us and why we met, and why we fucked with it is just completely different. Like, you know, uh, Khalil came off of, like, a, that jazz that jazz background. Rax is big rock background. I'm big on 90s R&B while I also listen to a lot of rap. Hey, you look like uh, you just came off a of Bruce to Man uh, yeah. video shoot. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> You could have nah, been, been a boys to men. Boys to men. Yeah, man. I'm E-B-B-B. telling you, nah. Because my pops, my pops <laughs> listen to nothing but '90s R and B. So nah, I know I that shit, though. Yeah, man. No problem, I, my pops also does road trips. Like my whole dad's side of the family does road trips, so that's all we used to listen to. So I fucked with '90s R and B big time. So, you know, like I said, that that basically that uh, how how we're uh, we have that variety within yeah. our own group, kind of like emulated into the competition as a whole and I think that was also like he was saying brought that's something that I want to touch artists. on you guys were saying because you were saying that you, you do poetry you sing you rap so everybody's competing with their particular medium well no uh, you have to be uh, some type of like singing or rapping artist or a band okay. to compete in the competition we have spoken with artists open up the show to get oh. everybody's attention you know set the tone yeah, for the yeah I was just the first time I went around I was just there for he entertainment was a artist. yeah I was just a featured artist I wasn't competing the first yeah. time yeah and you said, okay, you have a live band. 
how do you guys get the live band to play the music that the guy did, that the guy got? You know what I'm saying? Oh, the person got. Hey, this is one of the live band members right here, Khalil okay. Bohannon. Yeah, so you guys practice on prior drums, yeah. to coming on to the show? Does yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. You rehearse with them. Oh. This is very well thought out. You know, we we with the band, it's like you have an option because what, what we've noticed is like, yes, a backtrack is good, but a live band could be better. You know, like once you have that feel, the, the music fills the air. You know, it gives a it gives a performance a whole different yeah no different definitely feel. a dynamic. That's something that I was thinking. I was like, yo, so then like if you guys are playing live with the band, that means that you had to have rehearsals with that band, mm -hmm. so that you could have perfected your performance in those rehearsals. You yeah, know what I'm saying? No, but they're it's really not organized. Like it's, it's not like oh, you just show up you and you get on a stage and you just like no, 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 no. no it's no, organized. There's no room like, for that. Like, like they have meetings. Yeah. Like they have like two, three meetings prior to like throughout to the show. season. They sent you like, you know, like on email, the whole yeah. contract of it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You could read it. You could find out stuff. You have you know, all like the you options make to songs do your, mm -hmm. you have all the options to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. It's on you whether you take it or not. Sound check yeah. is available to you. The band is available to you. But yeah. whether you act on it or not, that's different. It's up to you. So Damn, that's dope, man. That's so, so fucking it's like, dope. It's like, it's like a curated show yeah. almost. Yeah. But, you know. So then how did it come about? You guys just like, this just happened just like because you started an open, open mic or, or was so, this like your grand plan? So Fate, this, is what, this is basically what happened. Fate. This is what really what happened. So <laughs> the, the genius himself, Khalil Bohan and Lil AK, uh, he, <laughs> you know, I get it, I'll get rapper's name though. So uh, he had, he was the one who really came up with everything and came up with the idea of it. Um, me and, I know Khalil because me and Khalil was in the same fraternity. Okay. Um, you know, that's my boy. We've known each other for a very long time. And he would always tell me about, you know, this is what he was doing and everything. I fucked with, you know, I just love music in general. So I was like, damn, like, I fuck with that 100%. And, uh, you know, I will just come out, support him and everything like that. And then, you know, I will also, I remember we were, we were actually supposed to meet up the night of the very first one to even talk about, like, what we could, what he could have done better with the very first event. Um, and Rax was a, Rax was the host originally, so mm. she was doing her thing on the stage, and uh, you know that's where it kind of started with me and him. And then I was just telling him, I was like giving him advice here and there, and then you know after that I had to like tell him like, yo, let me be a part of it, and I just would help him out after like the third event. I was starting to help him out a lot with it, and then uh, Rax was always doing her thing about it. I let her talk about what she wants to talk about with that. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much, um, like I said before, I met Khalil mm -hmm. at, at an old job of ours. Mm -hmm. and at a restaurant. Yeah. Nice. And I've always kind of been very heavy in the music scene. I My family is very musically oriented. Grow, we grew up, you know, going to concerts, going to shows, mm -hmm. you know, backstage, meeting artists. Mm -hmm. So once, so I was always kind of in it, you know, mm -hmm. and Khalil noticed that. And he's like, you know what? Uh, I have this event. Um, I think you'd be a good fit to even just host. And I started out hosting. It, you know, I kind of pulled back from the hosting because I was like, I'm more of a behind the scenes person. Mm -hmm. I like to be, you know, talking to people, mm -hmm. setting up the the bands, the meetings, um, you know, looking for artists, going out to open mic nights, going out to uh, to even showcases as well. And um, yeah, it was kind of just something that fell on my lap. And I was like, you know what? This is good. Like, I want to stick with it. I really yeah. want to stick with it. And and I know so many artists, my personal friends, who, who are just looking for something extra in, in a show. And I'm like, you know what? We got to make it ourselves. We got to make this thing our own thing and make it completely different. And, and, you know, I've gotten my friends on the stage and I'm, and for me, that's the biggest accomplishment that I can get my friends and, you know, the people that I know that have such great talent that I can get them on that stage. That's like, that does it for me. This, already. this, this goes into my next topic, mm -hmm. which is something that we were discussing a little bit before when we originally started, um, earlier, but we weren't recording and it's the lack of love of, uh, for creatives here in South Florida and Miami, um, we we're saying that Miami has a music scene, but it doesn't have a music unit, you know, that it doesn't have like a particular, like people who are going to like push you. Um, what do you think that derives from, you know, you guys being that you guys decided, fuck this, we're going to buck the trend and we're going to change this. Mm -hmm. What do you think that, that the fact that, I mean, Miami has so many different cultural people that they could create so many awesome things and it's never really been spotlighted or, or showcased. Why, why is that? I think Zemiso had a perfect answer. Yeah. Like we were talking about it earlier. Oh, my 
thing. Oh, well, I, what I was saying was on the topic. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's Lorenzo. <laughs> <laughs> Singer songwriter from Miami. But, what's um, your Instagram, man? What's your Instagram? We're going to get to that at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I was saying that because uh, back in the day, like, we're thought of for, like, Latin culture mm -hmm. and booty shaking music, ass shaking music, Luke Skywalker, like, back in the day, you know, like, decades ago when... Uh, Trump bass music, heavy bass, and Trump music was like predominantly what was accepted in Miami. Like Fat Man Scoop. Fat Man Scoop, all of that. That's what we were thought of as. And once you have other states and other, you know, looking at us as just the beacon for that, they hold us, like they 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 crippled us as mm -hmm. that's all we can offer. When we have so much more to offer. I, I said a lot of the CEOs back in the day were big dope dealers. Mm -hmm. So they only signed artists that did the music that they like to listen to. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to sign a, a country artist. Yeah. That shit ain't hard enough. I ain't going to sign no classical singer. I don't see that shit selling. Not living where we live. I'm not going to sign, you know, this and that. Like, they weren't open to the different varieties of music that came from their own towns, which, which is fucked up. But yeah. it's the reality of it. Yeah. And as a result of it, now we're trying to fight our way. You know, to versatility, yeah. right? To show because there's versatility. If you live here, you'll see it, you'll experience it. But on a global platform, we haven't been showcased yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. And it, we getting our, our foot in the door slowly but surely. But it's because of things like the flex. How you feel about everywhere you go and you tell people you're from Miami? People be like, "Dolly." Oh <laughs> my! How God. you feel about that? I mean, I'm that not. One. I'm not even gonna lie. Stuff like that. I like and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Dale, 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 Dale. Right back. is good. It's good to vacation, but when yeah. it comes to music, it's still mm -hmm. struggles that we're trying to fight our yeah. way through. I think it's just like, it's, it's kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog type of world in Miami because since we are known for such a narrow path of like music, when when you become yeah that one rock band that made it out of Miami, it's like you know I don't think there's room for any anyone else. Yeah, that's so but sad. But it's kind of trying to push past that because there's so many good rock bands, there's so many good jazz bands, Crazy. like just instrument instrumentalists. Like we have a guy in the band that plays a flute, sax, oh, yeah. you know, cello. We've had everything, and and we're like, man, you know, Miami. You have to show all of that for it to be more visible and just, you know, for more people to be like, okay, like, there's space out here for, for trumpets, violins, for everything. Yeah. You know, there's space. You gotta be bold with it. Because yeah. yeah. there's so yeah. many artists that actually do come from Miami that actually have made it, mm -hmm. but... They only mention Miami for a small fragment of the interviews. Yeah. Yeah, I come from yeah. Miami. But then I moved to LA. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Dead ass for exactly. a second. Like, yeah. be bold and be proud of where you <laughs> yeah. came from. Like, and so let people true. know yeah. that it's more of me where I come from. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go back there. Like, you got you can't be yeah. afraid of it. Everybody, you can move yeah. and venture off, but don't forget where you came mm -hmm. from. Everybody just thinks that, like, oh, to hit it big, you got to be in L.A., in New York, you know? And it's Even like, nah. Miami people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Right, right, right. Like, you hear that and all it's the time. But look, funny thing is, like, I've been, you know, I've been, I, I competed in Flex for people to be like, hey, Teddy, though, you serious? I see you really mean what you, you know what you mean with your music, mm -hmm. right? But, like, I'm still not doing, like, a lot of features in Miami either. Yeah. But... Texas called me because yeah. I'm from Miami. So they're like, yo, he's from Miami. He's going to come do some lit Spanish shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> they love it. But, you real. know what I'm saying? I don't know what he's saying, but it's dope. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? For real, though. I don't know what he is. Is he Mexican? I don't know. Or he's got, is he Cuban? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it's weird because it's kind of like that. And then here in Miami, too, I remember one of my college professors told me one time that, um, and I, I guess that was back in the day, but he said it took about, 50 airplays mm. for you to really be considered, you know, like kind of like a credible kind of song in Miami, whereas it took a hundred in New York. Yeah. So that's why a lot of New York artists were, you know, yeah. trying to promote that Down Miami south. lifestyle. Yeah. So then it goes back to what Zorenzo said. Now they're trying to live our lifestyle and what we going to live. Like yeah. Yeah. we have a lot of stuff that we created, but you're not really giving right. the credit to where it really started off. You're giving sure. it to the person who's yeah. doing it now, exactly. which I mean, it's really every, to each their own, but now we gotta go yeah to you gotta let them know where the substance came from like all the good music that you created like it came from your miami experiences when you were here you know what i'm saying like even if you've 
moved on to other things. You know what's so weird about mm -hmm. Miami too? Have you ever gotten this? When you perform and people be like, you from here? You live yeah. here? <laughs> I've gotten that. Like, when I, I love perform those. places, I like, love those. you from Miami? I'm like, yeah. yeah. What the hell? I sound you like I'm from Britain? What the fuck? Yeah. Right. Right, exactly. It's like, we're not That's just tourists is. out here. Because like, they don't expect so much talent here. to be out here. Because yeah. exactly. they just expect it to be the same old, you know, ass and titties and shit like that. Like, and, and palm Boy, trees. You, you know? Can do jazz notes. There's a lot of people. Yeah, though. with goals. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm from like I'm from the Hollywood area. I'm like, everybody down the street from me know, know how to rap, sing, do something. There's yeah. a lot. There's a yeah. lot. Yeah. You go to Fort Lauderdale, there's a lot of there's rock lot. stars. The church is yeah. a lot of girls that can sing. There's a billion Jennifer Hudson. There's so many, so many. Oh, my God. I was arguing with my sister today. Broward like, is like full of vocalists. It's so yes, crazy. yes, oh, it's so crazy. many, man, and it's it's so. I think that's just even more crazier that it's like, yo, you have so much talent, and I feel like not even enough people are down here, like even looking for artists. And I'm like, mm -hmm. like originally I'm from Chicago. I'm like, I see that everywhere, man. Yeah. I see that mm -hmm. everywhere, and it's just not like that in Miami. That's crazy, man. So where's let's pause on on the artists a little bit. I want to focus on each one of y'all a little bit for, for a second. So Renzo, what's your uh, background? Where are you from originally? Your peoples. Oh. Shit, I'm from all over. I'm from Miami. So Miami, you're Florida, like, the heart of Miami. So you're like third generation, fourth generation Miami. Yeah. My, my people are from like Georgia. You know, okay. you got a little country. All right. A little country <laughs> shit going on. But yeah, Miami for the most part. What high school did you go to? Like four different high schools. I moved around. Four different high schools. Like a, said like really five different high schools. You're only four years, right? How all the right. fuck? But... <laughs> A uh, whole bunch of elementary schools. So all in I've, Miami. Just been, I've been all over, man. I've been down south. Yeah. I've been in Miami Gardens. I've been in Miramar. I've been in North Miami. You know. So I've you been, traversed all of South Florida. Basically. I'm just all over. I know, Teddy, you Puerto Rican. You already told us uh, your your background. Uh, and Khalil, what, what, what's your background, man? African American. You were like Black third, fourth proud. generation, born Miami as well. No, no, no. I mean, my dad's from New Jersey. My mom's from Maryland. Oh, so you're a first. You're like a transplant. You just originally yeah, got they, here. They, they, both, they <laughs> met in, in Florida. Yeah. Oh, and they that's were like, dope. damn, weather's nice. Let's chill. That's a diverse household. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a diverse household. Yeah. That's, that's what funny, come from. son. I like that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. And you rock. What, what's your background? So I was born here in Miami in Hialeo. What up, okay. La Ciudad Progresa, you know. <laughs> um, but my parents are from Colombia. Both of them are from Colombia. Oh, so I'm Colombia yeah. too. I, I saw, I noticed the wristband, the, oh, yeah. the bracelet. I was like, oh. What high school did you go to, by the way? Because I didn't ask you. It was definitely in Palm Beach. I don't oh, okay. think they, people mm -hmm. in Palm Beach don't even know about my high school, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, bro? What, what um, so I first went to a high school in uh, Hialeah, which was Miami Lakes Tech. Mm -hmm. um, at first, I, like, I wanted to study something there. It was a technical school. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, let me study graphic design, but then I was like, eh, I don't, I don't know, I don't really, I don't really fuck with that too much. But then after, I went to uh, Felix Varela, and mm. they had a veterinary program there. I was kind of doing that a little bit, didn't really want to do that after. So then I was like, you know what? What do I really love to do? Mm. Music. Like I love, I can't play an instrument myself, mm. but you know, I have a huge appreciation for artists and musicians. So that kind of, you know, I was like. My roots, that's that's where it is. So yeah. that's that's what that's yeah. what influenced you? Yeah. Nice, definitely. Nice. My parents, my family, like I said, very music oriented. So it was like, you know, they support me one thousand percent in what I do. Even with the flex, they're like, Oh, you're you're gonna go do the flex? Mm. Yeah, tell us how it goes. You nice. need anything, let me know. His family too, super supportive. I see yeah, them I see them at shows yeah, all the time. Shows, uh, at every single yeah, show, I'm like his dad is becoming We're talking my about the wife too. before the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah. And you, they Pierre, what what's your is. background? Uh, me, well, my mother is Haitian. She's from Cap Haitian okay. in Haiti. And then uh, she's Haitian and French. And then my father is uh, just black American. You know, right. He's from Indiana. And then uh, my mom and my dad met in Chicago. And that's where I was from. Uh, moved down to Miami, Florida in 2001. Lived with my grandparents. Mm. Yeah, she lives in like right in Miami Gardens, man. And uh, that's where I was. I was over there for a very long time um, until I moved to, until I moved to Broward. Mm. 
And then that way, I was living in like Pembroke Pines, and I was living on the east side of Pines, and I was, went to uh, MacArthur High School, which is like right next yeah, to no Broward answer. College. Yeah, yeah, right next to Broward College. And that's what's that, up, man. Yeah, that shit was crazy. That's dope. So, so your inspiration, what got you started? What got you into the, you know, into this biz? Into this biz with the flex, or just, oh, in, just in general, like you want to work with creators and stuff like that. I mean, just me in general. Just me in general. I've always been a very like extroverted not not necessarily like crazy hype man but like i like to i like to talk to people on one-on-ones i like to be in in a good place with good people just chilling vibing and you like talking about life and everything like that and just at the same time connecting that's the biggest thing over everything is connecting for me so you know i just do that well with, with a lot of people everybody who i who i cross paths with teddy like me and teddy like i've known teddy for a minute now and yeah, we like chopped it up years. instant yeah, as soon as I met, I met him from one of our events when I was like originally pledging, mm. and you know we chopped it up instantly, and you know we've just always been cool. Yeah, he would he would like call sometimes. He'd be like, hey, I'm gonna send you like I'm gonna spit you something that I just wrote. He would leave me like a voicemail, something mm. that he spit, or he'll send me like you know yeah, a, a, yeah, yeah. a message about it. Hey, what do you think? And we used to like exchange bars and stuff like that. That's so, dope. Yeah, man. so he, he's been at it for a minute. So so yeah, so musically musically like I've always um, like I told you I listen to a lot of. Of R and B, like '90s R and B, but I also listen to a lot of hip hop and a lot of battle rap. To still to this day, I listen to a very lot of battle rap. So I'm big on lyrics and everything. So I've always done um, rapping. I had my little rap group group when I was a little in Chicago, and uh, now I, I just it got to a point where I was in middle school. I did a lot of poetry. Mm. So you know when I heard that Teddy did poetry and everything like that, we used to link on that. Just from my love of music and poetry and rapping, you know that was my way to express myself because I sucked at expressing myself mainly with girls. Always mm. hate. I could never. It sucked. It sucked. I didn't know how. So you how used to it do. as an outlet. Exactly, man. I used to write girls poems. I was that lame ass <laughs> motherfucker. I used to write, give and tell me in a little envelope with a heart on it and everything. No, I, I, that was the heart. I didn't, I didn't use the heart. I used it. I ain't come on. I use a heart. I use a tulip. Come on, uh, man. You got me manly, dog. No. From your secret admirer. <laughs> Spray a little cologne on it. Yeah, yeah he's still yeah, like the girl. The Michael yeah. Jordan yeah. joint. Yeah. Hey, Clip, back, Clip, hater. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Hey, back in those days, you only had either Michael Jordan or a hey, DS hey, moves. Hey, hey, this is a, this <laughs> a podcast, not a rank. You still get a girl off of that though. You can still get a girl off of that. Uh, yeah, the girl, yeah, the girl that think is cheesy is gonna show all her homegirls, and it's gonna be the one. Exactly, and that's one thing that's so sweet. Oh exactly, and that's one of the things that I learned. The clutch. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I learned, man. Yeah. You know, these the <laughs> girls that I really gonna hope. take it seriously are gonna love this shit. Yeah. Reality, one day, so. You know, I never really, I never really worry too much about that, and I just always stay gotta stay focused on myself, and you know, just me connecting with people, me meeting Khalil, and like Khalil just being my boy and telling me that like this is what he does. I'm like, I'm like shit, dog. That sounds like the American dream. Like I'm about, <laughs> I want, yeah. like my biggest thing is like American I want exactly, like I want to put people on, man. Like I, everybody that's around me, that's in my circle, even if you're not in my circle, if I can reach out my hand to you and help you you know, make it in some way, shape, or form, I'll do that. Especially if it's in the form of music, that's why it's an American dream for sure. That's all, so man. that's what got me into that. And you, Zorenzo, how, how'd you get started with music, man? What was your, you know, what was your inspiration? Has it been like a lifelong thing or has it just been like... It's just, it's just always been a part of me, man. The story goes. This is a story to always <laughs> tell. When I was a, a child, I would cry a lot. All right. So my mom would always play the turn of music up really loud. Like when she cleaned up the house, she would turn the music up loud to drown out my oh, crying. And you know, if you hear something for so long, like really loud, even when it's soft, you're still gonna hear it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I would always hear it in my head. And it went from the music that I heard on the radio. Well, I start, used to try to mimic everything that I heard on the radio anyway. But it went from that to me developing my own little orchestra in my head. And I would just wake up in the middle of the night with song ideas out of no fucking way, recording them on the vo um, answer machine, because I was too young to have like certain shit. So I changed the passcode on the answer machine, record my little songs, and nobody was able to check the voicemail ever. Mm -hmm. But it was my little shit. You know, That's so dope, I went from there. And then as I grew and I guess my mind expanded, I started like doing like little astro projection shit, like bringing shit from my dreams. Like I would have a studio session in my dreams. You know, when you want to hit the studio so yeah. bad, that shit gonna happen. It's like inevitable. Like I would dream about, I would dream about studio sessions, big sessions, me and the, by myself, behind the board, running in there, recording, whatever. And when I wake up, I remember all the damn lyrics. Damn, that's what's up. Legit. Remember the lyrics or either remember the hook. I'll pull a hook from it or something. And You know, that shit's happened to me, right? I'm not. I'm not even bullshitting. I know yeah, that you're not bullshitting I mean, because that shit has happened. When he to said that to me, I was like, "Yo, that's the same shit I went through." Like that I have woken up with tunes that I've been 
fucking with in my head. And then I tr- I'm then I'm like, yo, I'm gonna remember this in the morning, and then I don't remember. It. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. yo. Sucks, man. <laughs> like, I wake up at two in the morning. I'm like, yo, that's a dope ass tune right there. I just be like, I remember in the morning. <laughs> like, yeah, nah, you, know, shit ain't you just wake up like, ah, what the fuck? <laughs> I ain't, you have failed me. Yeah. So it went from that yeah. to me actually uh, getting my first shot in the studio from my uncle. Shouts out, unk. All right. First time in the studio, first time ever hearing my vocals like layered on top of each other and all that shit. And it it went so smoothly. The song was so lit to mm-hmm. me. And I was just sold from there. Like, I was like, I never want this feeling again. It was a feeling I never had. Like, my heart was just overfilled with joy, even though I had to keep that meme mug. I was just <laughs> so fucking happy. And I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah, and man. school don't offer this shit. Nothing like I can't. That's such a beautiful feeling to find one. something that you really want to do for the rest of your uh, life like your, that. To find your purpose. It feels your purpose, so exactly. fucking good. It feels like this is what I should be doing like all the time, every day, all day. Yeah, like day. what was I doing before yeah. I found this freestyling my way through life? Like, yeah. the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, when you asked me, oh, you were talking to me earlier, Cleo, about like what I did before. And I was telling you I had an insurance agency. I shut it down because like I was miserable, dog. Like, yeah, I was making paper, but like. I was miserable as fuck, son. You know what I'm saying? I was walking into the office. It was my office. And I didn't want to be in that bitch. Oh so then I'm God. like, yo, what the fuck am I doing here? And I'm telling these people to do all this other shit. But I don't even want to be here myself. So yeah. I was like, you know what? I have to find something that I really want to do. And this is like, I've always been creative myself. And I said, you know what? I got to do this, man. Because like, I don't want to wake up 65, 70, my yeah. life gone. And just oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah, I got a nice crib. But like, I was miserable throughout the whole deal. I'm tired of yeah. selling insurance. I'm tired, I'm tired of dealing with this shit. <laughs> I hate y'all motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Let me go in the studio by myself. Like, that's probably what you do. You know what I'm saying? You make so much yeah. money. You create your own <laughs> studio so you can do creative shit by yourself, you know? That's insane, yo. So what are you guys, uh, starting with you, Teddy, what are you guys working on right now, man? Like, what's your what's your current uh, situation, like, musically and things like that after the after the, uh, the flex? All right, so, like, right after the flex, it was pretty much, like, hit the ground running with everything, like, you know, within, like, probably, like, a few days or a couple, like, yeah, like, between a couple of weeks, probably, right after it was done, I was already sitting down with the videographer, you know, talking about ideas, looking at locations and stuff. And then um, right after that, a couple of weeks later, we went, we shot the video. Yeah, saw that. Super dope. Nice. Shout out to El Manicomio, by the way. You guys are video dope. Did. Yeah, Love and it. then right after the video, I had, the, I had my son. So, like, I kind of, like, my myself, I took a little personal break. I was in the studio recording stuff at that time. And then I, you know, after that, I st- got in contact with the, uh, the, the company on Mars Digital and you know, they gave you working me, on any new new music now? I have some new music coming, and then um, I'm gonna have uh, like more surprises too that are gonna be coming uh, with the distribution deal. So nice, it's nice, be nice. Dope. And you, Zorenzo, you working on what right now? Oh man, I got so much goddamn shit going on. Oh man, <laughs> the good. life of an artist. Yeah, you gotta keep busy. That's, That's the only good. thing that keeps me happy. Zorenzo actually, stay. he's figured out how to clone himself. He's in North Miami. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing a show right now. <laughs> And then his, he's on stage. His, clone number two is here at the end of you. Like, wow. That's dope. Nobody works more than this yeah, man. Exactly. No, we man. couldn't get clone number one, man. Damn, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> it was hard for me even to get him on the phone, dog. He's like, yeah. he's like, man, just like, I can't talk to clone one or two. I had to talk to the side guy, bro. Damn, Damn, that you were really like, that, buddy? One of them showed up. <laughs> Mary Kay had something to do. Ashley showed up. That's I don't know why I used the girl, <laughs> but ain't no, you know, popular male twins. Me, I'm working on a, a mixtape that's almost done. It's called Zero Fucks. All right. Um, and also my album is going to be called Z's by Racial Cassette. Okay. Z's as in sleeping Z's by mm-hmm. Racial as in mix and cassette as in tape. So Zorenzo's mixtape. And how many how many songs are on the on the album? You think you on the album is going to be about thirteen. All right, so full yeah, fledged album. Yeah, full fledged album. It's going to be about thirteen. On the mixtape is going to be about ten. You mm. say about and 10. the mixtape is gonna be original instrumentals or is no? It it's be- gonna be industry shit. Oh, okay, mixtape because I, I do so much original music. Like yeah. I wanted to fuck around with the industry shit and show them like. Nigga, so much come fun. on. That's what's up, dog. I, I like you guys I, I, hustling, I can... man. That's what's up. You guys won. You didn't sit back on your on your mm-hmm. fucking, you know, on your winnings. Like, oh, I'm just going to eat shit because I won. Oh, a lot yeah. of people just like, oh, I'm going to try for this. And then you win. And then you're just like, oh, I won. And you no, shit. no, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's, it's never like I think, that. I think that's the attitude that, you know, will leave you stagnant. I yeah. think that's that's the yeah. people that the flex stays clear of. They get people <laughs> yeah. that already have a momentum going so yeah. that they and know that the prize is not going to be in vain. They're not going to get someone like, okay, we see your potential. We want to, you know, like, push you for greatness. No, we, we see that you're going to do this and you want to do this. So 
Come be a part of this. That's we dope, can... man. And you, Khalil, I know you're running the show, mm. but you got anything personally? You you doing yeah. musically anything? Yeah, stuff yeah. like that? What's up, Come man? What's up? Beats, man. Talk oh, my God. Pull out the resume, Khalil. <laughs> Pull it out. See, it all started. Um, <laughs> nah, I mean, outside of the Flex, I got a, a producer duo. It's me and my friend Thomas. He's another member of the Flex Lab band. But we call ourselves Music vs. Machine, and we do basically live remixes of songs, like Live performances, I hop on the drums. He's on, uh, yeah, a music versus machine. Okay. No, it's music versus machine. Music versus machine. Okay, okay. Music versus music. machine. Yeah, because man versus machine is as everywhere. Yeah. We're trying to put like a play on words. Okay. okay. Music versus okay. machine. All right. So, thank you, though. Okay, that's what I was like. <laughs> she was whispering like, you messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, just in case. <laughs> fucking up, fucking up. <laughs> But yeah, but I got that stuff going on. I play in a couple bands around the city, and um, but as far as the flex, yeah, we have a festival event coming up, what? and we're starting to launch an open mic series. So there's like a lot mm-hmm. of stuff going on. We, we're trying to get more engaged in the culture, and because the competition, it's a lot of work, and it kind of leaves people empty because we do it like once every month, once every two months almost, mm-hmm. and people are always like in between, like, well, damn, what do we do now? Yeah. Open mic is a way for keep people refreshed, keep them engaged, and the flexible, um. We're still working I on like that. I like that name, by the way. It's hot, right? <laughs> it's it's hot. We are flexible. <laughs> it sounds dope. <laughs> now, that that to we that that now that we said it, it has to be named that. Because, yeah. like, we're like, man, we don't know what Fact. we should name it. It has to be it, flexible, it, it, dog. So that shit sounds. Yeah. Like, Fuck you don't even know what it is. You're like, I'm already there. Yeah, like, I'm there. I'm going. That shit was a flexible, yeah. son. What you doing? But basically, we're just taking all the artists from season one and season two. Like, if you were invited back as a finalist, it's a showcase to celebrate you guys. Because... I want to maintain ties with everybody who came through the flex. It's not like you hit the stage and boom, that's it, you're done. Like obviously, these guys got their their prize packages, but there's a bunch of other people that won, mm-hmm. and I want them to feel appreciated. So it's kind of like a a hoorah. Keep the so family you guys are like together. building a family then? No, big yes, time, big time. 110%. And, you know, we like what I was telling Khalil is like we could be doing so much more with the flex as well. And you know, I hit up Teddy, I even hit up Zorenzo and all of our artists. First shout out to all of our artists that have come to the flex stage because. They're amazing artists. Like, we have our top winners, but I even heard the judges say they don't know who to pick sometimes because it's crazy. It gets crazy in there. So, um, you know, I want to be able to, you know, help you out in whatever way we can. So if we can help you get booked on another show, we'll help you do that. If we can help you. So we're basically like an all-time sponsorship for you two guys, too, because we're always even marketing about our artists. So in a way, yeah, we are a family. Once you come in and you cool with us, we're cool with you. And we're going to help you win just as much as you guys going to help us. Man, that's what's we're Building up, a unit. Man. And that's what we need. That's yeah, good. That's exactly what we was talking about. Like, that's what Miami's missing is like exactly. that one unit where like people's like, Gang, 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 this exactly. Miami shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, and everybody, like, link up. It doesn't matter, like, yeah, we got Chellist in the gang, but it's all good. Yo, no, Chellist <laughs> yeah. is badass, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo-Yo Ma is one motherfucking, you know what I'm saying? Badass motherfucker. Yo-Yo Ma. Like, what we found is that, <laughs> is that once you kind of, like, merge, merge things that are kind of unconventional and you don't think that they would sound good together, it's like, man, it takes a, it takes a show to a whole different level. That's good, it's, man. Yeah. You know how crazy it is? One of the Flex shows was in December and one of the, I don't know if it was like an actual competing artist or an entertainer, she like went up there and sang like Christmas. Like Carol's and shit. Christmas, but like the famous like mm-hmm. R&B versions of it. Duh, and it was so bad. Like nobody was even like mad. Like who is it? They were like, we talking about Deja Rose. Deja Rose. Deja yeah. Rose. Yeah, yeah man. Deja with Deja the Rose. red dress. She yeah. Was was she, came out, she sang this Christmas <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. Yo, it was dope. Like it was yeah. super dope. And you know, at the very end, this is also something that a lot of people don't know. What makes yeah. ours different? With the band. At the they very the end, at the end, we do a freestyle. Open at the end. freestyle. Open freestyle. Anybody who wants to come up, and it doesn't matter if the artist or in the crowd, you can come up and you can sing, rap, do whatever to the band playing an instrument and playing a little beat for you. And everything. Yeah, that's it's dope, dope man. Yeah, man. I love what you guys are creating, man. I'm gonna be out thank there. You, I'm gonna be you. catching some video of oh, this yeah, shit, putting this shit. Chopping it up for y'all. Yeah, you gotta go freestyle, go cypher too. For sure, man. I'll throw this shit live. I'll interview everybody who's coming up. You might have him as a guest judge or something. That's dope, man. A spot on K Bola. That's good, man. I love that, man. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, 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 Yo, I like that. I like that, man. I like how y'all thank you, man. I really appreciate you guys coming through, man, and talking to me and expressing what Miami needs and what Miami loves, uh, what we want to see more of. I know I'm a native and I want to see a lot of this. I've been dying to see something like this. And you guys have actually 
had the the opportunity to put it together and you went for it. You know what I'm saying? I applaud you guys. Um, and I applaud you guys for like applaud, being courageous man. and coming out and Y'all doing this applause, shit. Man. For real, man. Like this has been. I mean, Probably been missing. Um, no, it's a final thing to say. Like, I did this flex like as a, a way to show people you you can go and out do whatever you want to do. Yeah, you can achieve whatever you want within your capabilities. Like, it's it's up to you. You know what I'm saying? And with Rack, Raquel and Pierre, they've grown so much into their roles. Yeah. And they, they're doing shit right now that they never really saw themselves doing. And at the championship, the first championship flex, I went up on stage and I did a, a whole open mic performance or spoken word performance rather, detailing like, yo, I did this because I wanted to and because I believed in myself. You guys can do this stuff too. These artists over here, they they brought, they brought made themselves champions because they believed that they could. You know what I'm saying? And that's taken them you know, to places that they didn't think that they could go before. So... If you're just attending the flex, if you're on stage as an artist at the flex, you know, use it to grow. You know what I'm saying? Step out of your comfort zone. Try something new. Just challenge, push hashtag yourself. Hashtag find your flex. Find your flex. That that is our hashtag. Hashtag oh, find your flex. Come it's find your flex. And you know, bro, just feel it. That's I love all I'm that, trying man. to get at. I love that, man. So all you guys um are open to like labs and de- and and and, and opening to like all right, so can you uh starting off? Uh, with Teddy, the left side, give out your IG where people can get in contact with you guys and you know, um, all social media platforms Facebook, Twitter, IG is um, at OBR underscore TED. All right, nice, nice. And Zorenzo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zorenzo, singer songwriter from Miami. <laughs> prepared, and no, my prepared. social media, uh, you can find me on all social media platforms by hitting that search engine and typing in these letters Z O R E. N Z O again, Z O R E N Z O. Third time is a charm. Z O R E N Z O. Let's go. I like that, man. I like that. And Khalil, what can people get in contact with you, bro? Um, primarily follow the Flex M I A on Instagram right now. Okay, right now <laughs> the Flex, the flex M I A. Nice, nice. Right. Um. Otherwise, the the producer duo that I mentioned earlier with me and Thomas, music underscore MVM. This is on Instagram, by the way. MVM. Mm-hmm. I'm going to follow you right now. So music my underscore phone MVM. There you go. <laughs> Rock. So for me, I mean, I, I do a lot of the content on the Flex MIA. So that's usually where we get most of our artists reaching out to us and showing what we're really about. Um, but like my personal page, it's at R-R-A-A-Q-Q-Z-Z. <laughs> so at Rax. I know it's it's a mouthful, but it's. Mm. You I know, like it. It's I like kind of it. catchy. Um, yes, yeah, so that's where you see everything else that I do besides the flex. Yeah. Dope, dope. And Pierre? Uh, for me, you can follow me on my page at Cool C O O Philosophy. Um, a lot of people wonder why I say that. A lot of my old friends call me Coop. So Coop and then Philosophy. Coop's a lot of philosophy. All right. Coop Philosophy or the Flex MIA. You guys already know where to get in contact with these awesome creative people. Um, if you guys want to collab, feel free to reach out, man. I really appreciate you once again coming through and talking to us and putting and, and putting on for the city. And um, and man, this shit is dope, man. Everything you guys talked to me about tonight is something that I really, really, really encourage everybody to like jump on and try to and try to you know jump on the train. Miami needs more of this, yo. Until next time, if you guys like the show, feel free to share, subscribe, and all that good shit. I'm Darwin Figueroa from Quebola Podcast, Fresh Refresh uh, Entertainment. Hasta la próxima. Late. Here. I want to give everybody on this episode a thanks. Uh, Zorenzo, Teddy, Khalil, Rax, Raquel, and Pierre. I really want to thank you guys for coming on, talking to us, letting us know how you put it on for South Florida, how it is that you're hustling, and how you're putting in this work. You guys heard it there first. They're open for collaborations. I really would encourage everybody to go out and check out the Flex competition live and in color. It's dope as fuck. So yeah, you guys, thank you for listening and subscribing and then following the Kewala podcast. Every day we're growing slowly. I really want to give you guys a thanks and uh, appreciation for showing me some love. Till next time is the Kewala podcast. I'm your host, Darren Figueroa, Fresher Fresh Media. You already know what it is. Listo. Peace.